The Earth's inner core has been spinning slower for more than a decade. New analyses of seismic data from earthquakes and nuclear tests have provided evidence that Earth's inner core has begun to slow down relative to the planet's surface. According to researchers, this trend started around 2010. In new research published in the journal Nature, scientists from the University of Southern California USC, determined that the Earth's inner core is slowing down in relation to the planet's surface. This slowdown, scientists point out, is influenced by the gravitational pull of the Earth's mantle and the dynamics of the liquid outer core that surrounds the inner core. This phenomenon could potentially slightly affect the Earth's rotation. It is commonly believed that the Earth's core is a ball with a radius of almost 3,500 kilometers. It consists mainly of nickel and iron alloys, but may have admixtures of sulfur, silicon, or potassium. Researchers distinguish three structures that make up the Earth's core, the liquid outer core, the inner core and the transition zone between them, the Lehmann discontinuity. The Earth's inner core rotates freely, surrounded by a sea of liquid iron, the outer core. It has a radius of approximately 1,250 km and is solid in nature. Convection currents occurring in the Earth's core create a geodynamo, thanks to which our planet is surrounded and protected by a magnetic field. Above the core is the Earth's mantle and only above it is the crust of our planet on which we live. The Earth's core is located at a great depth and can only be studied based on the analysis of seismic waves. The motion of the inner core has been debated in the scientific community for decades. New research by USC specialists provides clear evidence that the inner core began to slow down around 2010. When I first saw the seismograms that suggested this change, I was stunned, said USC's John Vidal. Then we found dozens of observations signaling the same pattern. The inner core slowed down for the first time in decades. Other scientists have recently presented various models indicating the existence of this phenomenon, but our latest study provides the most convincing evidence, he added. Compared to its speed in previous decades, the inner core is slowing down relative to the planet's surface. Researchers indicate that this is happening for the first time in 40 years. Vidal and Wei Wang from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, CEO author of the publication, used repeated earthquakes for their research. Seismic events that occur in the same place, have a similar strength in the same source. Scientists collected and analyzed seismic data recorded during earthquakes around the South Sandwich Islands. There were 121 tremors there between 1991 and 2023. Researchers also used data from Soviet nuclear tests conducted between 1971 and 1974, as well as similar tests conducted by the French and Americans. With data showing how these seismic waves accelerate, decelerate, and interact with each other, scientists can estimate the position and motion of the inner core. According to the authors of the publication, the slowdown in the speed of the inner core results from disturbances in the dynamics of the liquid outer core. This is also influenced by the gravitational pull of dense areas of the Earth's mantle overlying it. This phenomenon has the potential to affect the Earth's surface. One can only speculate what the consequences of changing the movement of the inner nucleus will be. Vidal admitted that the release of the inner core could affect the rotation of the entire planet and change the length of the day by fractions of a second. Mega constellations of satellites threaten the ozone layer. The ozone layer in the stratosphere protects us from harmful ultraviolet radiation, which can damage genetic material. 
In recent years, since gene scientists considered wanted that the ozone hole is the smallest since its discovery. However, an unexpected increase in aluminum oxides that are produced after the deorbitation of satellites may threaten the recovery of the ozone layer. According to the World Economic Forum, there are currently over 6,000 satellites orbiting the Earth, but only 60% of them are still in use. However, as the space industry is accelerating, the number of satellites launched into space each year is expected to increase significantly in the coming years. Suffice it to mention the Starlink satellite constellation operated by SpaceX, which is intended to provide broadband internet around the world. The project has already put thousands of satellites into orbit, and many more are expected to be launched in the coming years. Each was designed to last five years in orbit. Deorbitation will then take place. When a satellite deorbits, it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Smaller elements usually melt and eventually evaporate. But the aluminum used in construction burns in the atmosphere to form aluminum oxide, which remains in the upper layers of the atmosphere for years. This is a little research topic. We don't know exactly what effect this will have, but scientists indicate that aluminum oxide particles are destroying the Earth's ozone layer. New research published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters showed that the concentration of aluminum oxides increased eightfold between 2016 and 2022 and will continue to increase as the number of satellites in low Earth orbit increases rapidly. The depletion of the ozone layer is related to human emissions of prions. Prions, CFCs are long-lived chemical compounds that rise to the stratosphere, where they are scattered by ultraviolet radiation, releasing chlorine atoms, which then destroy ozone molecules. Freons were massively used in industry until 1987, when an international agreement to counteract the ozone hole was signed, the Montreal Protocol. This has led to a ban on the industrial use of many chemicals that have a harmful effect on the ozone layer. The ozone hole over the South Pole appears at the turn of September and October, when spring begins in the Southern Hemisphere. The first sunlight after the polar winter causes the release of numerous chlorine atoms, which destroy ozone, depleting the entire layer. These reactions occur on the surface of clouds that form in cold stratospheric layers, ultimately leading to uncontrolled reactions that destroy ozone molecules. The Montreal Protocol has been successful in successfully reducing the ozone hole over Antarctica. Estimates by UN experts indicated that the ozone layer would recover by around 2060. But an unexpected increase in aluminum oxides in the stratosphere could halt the recovery of the ozone layer. The demand for Internet access is causing a rapid increase in the number of communication satellites. SpaceX is a leader in this endeavor. It has permission to put 12,000 people into orbit. Starlink satellites, but there are many more planned. In addition, other companies want to build similar constellations, which will also consist of thousands of satellites. Internet satellites in low Earth orbit have an expected operating life of up to five years. After this time, the satellite enters the atmosphere and another one is put into orbit in its place. The aluminum oxide produced during deorbitation causes chemical reactions that destroy stratospheric ozone, which protects the Earth against harmful UV radiation. Aluminum oxides do not react chemically with ozone molecules, but they trigger destructive reactions between ozone and chlorine that destroy the ozone layer. And because aluminum oxides are not destroyed by these processes, they can remain in the stratosphere for decades. So far, little attention has been paid to the problem of pollutants arising from combustion in the atmosphere of satellites. 
Previous research has mainly focused on the consequences of launching a launch vehicle into space, such as the release of rocket fuel. A new study by a research team at the University of Southern California is the first realistic estimate of the extent of this long-lasting pollutant in the upper atmosphere. It's only in recent years that people have started to think this might become a problem, said Joseph Wong of USC, CEO author of the new study. We were one of the first teams to look at what the consequences could be, he added. Previous studies used analyses of micrometeoroids produced in this process to estimate the pollution caused by deorbiting satellites, because collecting data from a burning spacecraft is impossible. But micrometeoroids contain very little aluminum, which accounts for 15%, up to 40% mass of most satellites. To obtain more accurate data, Scientists created a model based on the chemical composition of the materials from which the satellites are built and how they interact at the molecular and atomic level. The results allowed scientists to understand how these materials change with different energy inputs. Thanks to the new model, scientists found that in 2022, Satellite deorbitation increased the amount of aluminum in the atmosphere by 29.5%. Compared to the natural level, model also showed that a typical satellite weighing 250 kilograms, 30% of which mass is aluminum, it will generate about 30 kilograms of aluminum oxide particles, 1 to 100 nanometers in size, during re-entry into the atmosphere. Most of these particles are created in the mesosphere, 50 to 85 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Taking into account their size, scientists determined that it takes up to 30 years for aluminum oxide to fall to stratospheric altitudes, where 90% of the Earth's surface is located. Earth's ozone Scientists also estimated that by the time currently planned satellite constellations are completed, 912 tons of aluminum will fall to Earth each year. This will release approximately 360 tons of aluminum oxides into the atmosphere per year, an increase of 646%. Compared to normal levels,